Let's have a session on network analysis. So network analysis is a project management tool. And the idea is that managers would look at firstly all the tasks that are involved in the completion of a particular project. For example, in here we've got tasks A, B, C, D, E. They are all the tasks in order to complete the project. Then the second step is that for each of these tasks, you'll need to look at how long each takes. It might be in days, it might be in weeks, it might be in months, it could even be in years. But the idea is that you would find for each task how long it takes to complete that task. But the third thing you need to look at is are these tasks, are they simultaneous or sequential? By sequential, it means that do you need to complete one task before you can start the next task? For example, in this grid of all the things that this project requires, task A does not have a prerequisite. It's not sequential to anything, so it's the first one that can happen. But task B can only start until task A is finished. So you cannot start task B until A is finished. So A is a prerequisite. So that's an example of being sequential. You need to do A before B. And likewise with task E, you need to have completed A and C before you can do E. So that's the idea of simultaneous and sequential. Simultaneous just means you can do them both at the same time. Now, the idea with network analysis is once you've managers have got all of that data, they're trying to work out the quickest route to complete the project. And that is what's called the critical path, why it's sometimes called critical path analysis. Other important things to know related closely to critical path is that some tasks will have what's called a float time. And that is essentially the time and activity, one of those tasks, one of those activity, they can overrun without impacting that critical path without impacting the quickest route. And there is a formula for float time. The formula is the latest finish time, sometimes called the LFT, minus the duration of the task or the activity, minus the EST, the earliest start time. Now let's look at an example. Now we're going to use this table here to build our network analysis diagram. The first thing you'll notice with the network analysis diagram is there are circles, and these circles are what are called nodes. And nodes essentially connect tasks together. In each node, you'll have three numbers. You'll have to the left-hand side, the node number. So one, two, three, four, five. On the top right, you'll have the EST, the earliest start time. And then in the bottom right, you'll have the LFT, the latest finish time. The first task that has to happen according to our data is the one that has not got a prerequisite, which is clearly A. So A happens here. So we put task A, three days. If we go to the first node, we've got node number one, zero, zero, because clearly that's the start of the project. Then we add on task A, and we add on task A, zero plus three equals three. So the earliest time that node two could start is after three days. Now the key thing to recognize with network analysis diagrams is that when you're calculating the EST, you move from start to end. And when you calculate the LFT, you move from end to start. And you'll see that as we create this loop around this diagram in a sec. So zero plus three, because the task gave us three days, came to three. Now we're going to calculate the EST, the earliest start time for node three. Node three is being connected by task B here. And B lasts seven days and it can't happen until A is finished. So A is finished now at node two. So we can start B. And three plus the length of time that takes is seven. Three plus seven is 10. Then if we go the other way, because B and C both need A to have completed, so they could theoretically work simultaneously, then we can do for C. So three plus the length of C is three. So three plus three is six. Now, if we go through and we complete out the route for C, we're C, that for C, three plus three came to six, and six plus the length of task E, which is one, is six plus one is seven. So we'll just write it up there, seven, and I'll explain that in a sec. And then if we take the root of B and D, because for D it needed A to have completed, and then it needed B to have completed, hence it connects there, and couldn't start till day 10, 10 plus the length of time it takes is 3, 10 plus 3 is 13. And in this case, for this EST, I'm going to write 13 in there, not 7, 
because you need to write the largest number. So when you're dealing with two nodes, or it could be three nodes, going into the same circle, the same node, then you have to take the largest number. Take the largest number. Now we're going to work backwards in reverse to calculate those LFTs. So the first LFT is easy because this is the last node because it's the highest node number. So the LFT has just got to be the same number, 13. So 13 and 13. Now if we calculate backwards. So let's take the path this way first. So if E takes one day, then the latest finish time must be 12 because 13 minus one is 12. And then if we calculate the next bit for C, 12 minus three is nine. And we're just going to write that there. If we go back to node five and calculate background, so LFT node five is 13, D takes three days to complete. So clearly the latest finish time for node three must be 10. Then we will take the next uh, part of this. So LFT is 10, we take away seven. 10 minus seven is three, and we're right three in here. Again, we had two numbers because we had two nodes uh, coming out of node two. And therefore, when we're dealing with the LFT, we need to take the smallest number, okay? So when it's the LFT and it's got multiple nodes, it's the smallest number. When it's the EST and you've got multiple nodes, then it is the largest number. Um, clearly three is smaller than nine, so we can just move that nine out. That was just to help you see it. And if we just calculate back three minus three equals zero, which is where we started with. So that is fine now. The thing you'll notice is that I've put the zigzag line in here. That is what's known as the critical path, the quickest route. You can see that straight away because if you see the EST equals the LFT, as you can see here, you can see here, and you can see here, you know straight away that's the critical path. That's the quickest route. Now, one last thing we need to calculate is the float. And we saw that we have the critical path down this line. So anything that's not on the critical path must have some element of float time, some element of delay that can happen without impacting the final finish time, the critical path finish time, the quickest route. And we can see here, it's task C and E that are not on the critical path. So if we take task E and we want to calculate the float for that, well, you'd use the formula LFT minus duration minus EST. Now the LFT for the node that E connects into is 13, because you take the bottom right number, 13. And then minus off the duration, the duration of E is one day, 13 minus one, minus the earliest start time of the previous node, which is six. So 13 minus one minus six is six days. So on task E, there is a six day float. Now we can calculate the float for task C. So for task C, if we take the latest finish time of the node it connects into, that is 12. We minus off the duration, that is three. And then we minus off the earliest start time of the previous node. Previous node for that is there, so three. 12 minus three minus three is six. Six days is the float for task C. However, recognize that if you did max out that float when you were on task C and you took um, an additional six days, that means that you, when you get to task E, you have to do it in one day in order to keep on the quickest route and that critical path. Okay, so key things to remember before we move on is that if the EST equals the LFT, that's the critical path. If you're calculating the EST, you move from start to end. If you're calculating the LFT, you move from end to start. And when there are multiple nodes, if it's the EST, take the higher number. If it's the LFT, take the lower number. Right, now let's look at the pros and cons for network analysis. So looking at the pros and cons of network analysis, we we'll start with the pros. So the first pro is that if you're able to find the critical path, you can focus on it and you can therefore move resources across from those on flow to those on the critical path to make sure that critical path happens and you make the project complete in the quickest time. So you can use the flow for support. And by using that, effectively you are increasing efficiency and you are lowering waste, and that supports and connects into lean production. 
It's also important to know your critical path because then you could look to switch away from just in case towards just in time because you could introduce just in time along the way of when you need it because you've worked out those nodes, you've worked out those tasks, you've connected them all in, now you can see where you can introduce just in time to make the critical path happen. And anything to do with just in time always leads to that um, increase in cash flows that you have. More details on just in time, click the card up there. Number three is it suits delegation because you can take certain parts of the critical path and you can delegate that off to managers. So it clearly makes sense that management styles loop into this. More details on delegation, click the card up there. Now, the cons of network analysis. Well, firstly, network analysis takes a lot of time to do. It costs money to do. You need someone with project management skills to create it. And the next thing is that what if the estimates are wrong? Because if the estimates are wrong for any of those tasks or any of those uh, the nature of those tasks, if they're sequential or if they are simultaneous, if you get that wrong, it might mess up the critical path and then it's no longer actually the quickest route. So that's a problem there. So you need someone with skill and that can make accurate estimates. And the last thing is if you become so obsessed with the critical path and it's the only thing that matters, then it might lead to shortcuts along the way from managers or from subordinates that fear managers that they need to just keep on that critical path otherwise they're very much accountable for it and shortcuts leads to lowering quality and if you get lowering quality and it hits the end customer then that could ruin reputation so i hope that helps with network analysis and i'll see you at the next session